Good evening, everybody. And this is Noreen McClendon. I'm your uh, facilitator for another session of Free to Heal. Free to Heal is where we come together every week. We're formerly incarcerated loved ones, and we come together to try to heal the wounds that were caused um, by mass incarceration, whether we were um, incarcerated ourselves or we were the loved ones of people incarcerated. And so we come together every week so that we can heal. We talk, we try to be extremely honest um, about um, the things that have happened to us and we share one with another. And hopefully you can share this information with people um, around you um, and people you may know. So we're on uh, YouTube, but also all social media platforms. And we encourage you to go back and look at some of our other videos as well. But tonight I want to talk about a topic that um, is one has was one of the hardest things for me to adjust to because our 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 um goal here is for us to be better individually so that we can be better for our families better families create better neighborhoods better neighborhoods communities and so on and so forth so the goal is to be better and tonight's topic is about forgiving ourselves for the things that we feel like we did wrong and I will tell you, in my experience um, for myself, next to acknowledging that a lot of the pain that I was in in the past was because I participated in stuff that I should have let go sooner, the next hardest thing was to forgive myself for it. And I had a huge time um learning how to forgive me, not just for things that I participated in, but also things that I didn't know that I wished I had known. So there's like this notion that, well, I should have known better. And then I can't forgive myself for the things that I didn't know. And so in my book, um, Her People Highway, um, I write this. For me, second only to acknowledging that I bore responsibility for the excruciating pain I suffered in a relationship, forgiving myself had to be the most significant step to releasing the pain of the relationship. The hardest thing to do and the best guarantee that I would never experience that kind of pain again. Forgiveness of anyone else seems to be extremely difficult for people in general. The definition of forgive is to cease to feel resentment against. To cease to feel resentment against. That does not say that we, ex we, we, give, we excuse the behavior, we're justifying the behavior. It just means that we don't feel resentment about it anymore. We have released it. We have moved on from it. And that is what forgiveness is. One of the reasons in all the conversations that I've had through the years with people and groups and different things about forgiveness is that that's like saying it's OK what they did to me. No, that's not what it is. Usually we're forgiving so that we can go free because when we don't forgive, we got to hold on to it and we got to remember about it. So what happens is it holds us down. <laughs> Excuse me. It requires too much concentration on our part to remember it, okay? So the thing of it is, is to cease to feel resentment against. That's the definition of forgiveness. It's one thing to forgive another person, but to forgive myself was very hard. I kept thinking I should have known better. I didn't realize that the very reason I experienced the situation was to teach me the lesson, like when we go through things, there's lessons involved. And so I was going through it so that I could learn the lesson. I expected myself to already know what I didn't know. I would not feel resentment toward a baby for not knowing how to spell cat. If the baby doesn't know, he or she just doesn't know. None of that stopped me from feeling resentment toward myself for allowing um, another person to control my emotions and heartstrings and hurt me so much. I am responsible for protecting my heart. And that's what this is in relationship to. But I want you to understand it doesn't matter what the circumstance is. It's all the same. Usually the issues are we don't want to. We haven't yet forgiven ourselves because we think we should have known 
or we think we feel guilty about whatever happened. Say there was some big something that happened and we just, whatever it is, we um, feel guilt and shame that we participated and we don't forgive ourselves. But that forgiveness of ourselves is so important to allow us to heal. As long as we hold on to the uh, unforgiveness, as long as we fail to forgive ourselves, then we stay in that bondage to whatever that particular thing is. It still has the power to affect us every single day, not because it has to, but because we give it the power. Because mm -hmm. I know that's what I did. I gave it the power to keep me in bondage and to keep me feeling hurt and all of those things. And at some point, the light went off. Okay, because at first I didn't even know that I was holding resentment against myself for not knowing better. I was, you know what it was? I know I was too busy being ashamed. I was embarrassed and ashamed that this relationship didn't work. And then one day it occurred to me, who are you ashamed in front of? Who do you know that didn't have a failed relationship? <laughs> I start thinking, why am I embarrassed in front of them? Why am I ashamed? Who, who in my world has never done anything that they weren't proud of. I didn't know anybody, but I was holding myself to an unrealistic standard and I was doing it to myself. And I was like, wow, I, I had to learn to forgive myself. And that is, and it was easier for me. Like I'm good at letting somebody else off the hook. I got that down because I do know that it only hurts me to hold on to it. But it was me that I had the hardest time Again, I think it was because I was ashamed and I was embarrassed and I felt like I should have known better. When in reality, you only know what you know. Right. Right. You only know it when you learn it. You only learn, learn it when it's time. My granddaughter's getting ready to start kindergarten on Wednesday, tomorrow. She doesn't know what they're going to teach her in kindergarten already. She doesn't already know those things. She's, she's going there for them to teach her that. Well, the universe has a way of teaching us things by putting us through stuff. And if we pick up the lesson and not the embarrassment or the shame for not knowing it, we can forgive ourselves. So now what I want to do, I want to open up any comments. Talk to me. Somebody talk to me. Tell me what's on your mind. What you thinking? Hello. Hello. Yep. I um I just I just chimed in. I was, um, what 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 is the so what what we're talking about? Hi Chester, we're talking about Hi. um about forgiving ourselves for the things that we have done and participated in. And I was explaining to everybody that um next to acknowledging that the pain I was in from a, a failed relationship and all that, the reason I was in so much pain was because I participated. But second to that, the hardest thing to do was for me to forgive myself. And even though my example was about a relationship, it could be anything. It could be anything that we just don't forgive ourselves and we hold on to it. So that's the topic. I think the reason why we do that, too, because it's a lot of shame there. That it's was a lot of shame. Thing. That was my thing. Yeah. I was ashamed. I was, oh, I had so much shame, Unnes shame and embarrassment. And it was and, yes, yes. Yeah, and you know, we we a lot of times when we don't when we don't have when we're not secure in ourselves, we worry about what people think of us and what they say, and that keep us close, you know, close to self. You know, we don't want to look like a certain person or look like I'm this bad person or I have any insecurities or I'm, you know, we scared to fail, but. For you to succeed, you have to you have to fail. You know, when I was in prison, I failed in life because I sent myself to prison. Nobody sent me there, you know, and we have to be able to have self-awareness and be able to recognize our faults. Mm -hmm. But just like you said with your with your granddaughter, she don't know what they're gonna teach her. But one important thing is she's willing to learn. Yes. So that's the whole key to overcoming. Our, our, our shortcomings, you know, and our insecurities and our fears, you know, I mean, we're going to always go through life and stumble sometime, but it's like me. I'm not perfect, but 
I used to say that when I made mistakes, right? But I can say it now and say I'm not perfect, but I can always do better, yeah. you know? So I'll be willing to learn and go. And and, and I'm I'm always open to um, positive criticism, you know, because I have to try to look at it from other people's point of view in order for me to be a better person, you know? So that's where I'm at with that. Yeah, thank you. Yes, and it's so important because I tell you that was my big thing is I was so busy being ashamed and embarrassed and didn't want people to know whatever I was embarrassed in front of, you know, about. And so it, it created that whole trying to hide it and then, like you say, feeling guilty that I didn't know. But the thing of it is, is that the lessons that you learn when you fail help you to succeed the next time. Exactly. And usually the lesson is very, very, very important. So thanks for that. Terrell, I'm going to come to you right now. I see your hand up. Terrell. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the reason why I named my company Lessons Learned. Mm. Because all life is is a bunch of lessons that we learn. And it's a matter of when you learn them and how you learn them. And if you learn them before you expire. And just being in prison and doing a lot of studying and a lot of spiritual studying and spiritual connection and learning myself and being trained by the creator to have an understanding of a lot of different things. It definitely, shame is one of the biggest things that keeps us from, from moving forward. Yeah. It keeps us from, 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 from facing ourselves because we shameful. But once we grow, to, to understand that, hey, I have nothing to be shamed about. This is life. It's lessons I have to learn. You know, nobody came out knowing none of this shit. You know, and things change as life progresses and as time progresses and as people progress and everything evolves. So um, when people get stuck in that area to where they can't forget themselves or they can't look at themselves in the mirror and that building up that healthy introspective, that's what's on my card. That's one. That's that's what goes with lessons learned. Building up that healthy introspective because it starts on the inside. Yeah. You know, you can, the outside could be perfect, but the inside could be rotten to the core. Right. You know what I mean? And that's what's going to speak to everybody. That inside. You know, people going to see the outside as soon as you open your mouth or you make a move. It's going to be like. Ugh. Yeah, what's in there is definitely comes out. And you know what? It, it it also leads me to say this, Terrell, too. A lot of times people think that because their outside is presented a particular way that people don't see the inside. But normally, like I think I've said it to you guys before, and I'm going to do it like this. Um, normally we put on a mask, but this is how the mask is. <laughs> We think we hiding it and people can see right through the mask. But we think that we are hiding whatever it is that we don't want other people to see. When Chester talked about our insecurities, our, 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 you know, things that we're not comfortable with, we think they're hidden, but actually people do see it. Um, and if we allow ourselves to acknowledge it, somebody might actually be able to help us with it and be able to help t take the load off of our backs, but we just don't for whatever reason, we're not ready um, to to do that. And one of the things, to, another reason just occurred to me that we don't forgive ourselves is some of us have allowed our what, what we're not forgiving ourselves for to become our identity. Like my identity was, you know, a woman that was hurt in this relationship. You know, I have I have a family member who um, had been attacked. You know, and and her trauma is her identity now. Like everything, all she wants to talk about is trauma and this, and that's what you bring more to yourself. And so she's, you know, she's in that space and I hate it for her, but it's because now she is the victim of trauma. And victimhood for her is ongoing. And anything she could do to be the victim, that's what she's going to focus on. And so a lot of times we don't want to let it go because we become so comfortable in being the victim or being the underdog or being the downtrodden or the disrespected or whatever it is that we hold on to. But again, with us, it, 
in order to get better, we got to forgive ourselves for those things that we didn't know, things that we didn't intend, that happened that were unintended consequences of things we did. There's a lot of things that we have to forgive ourselves for. And so I want to uh, spin it around. Who else? Who else wants to chime in for me? Can you like another Wait one second, Otis. Of people not forgiving themselves or people identity. Which one? Like girl who has Uh huh. And yeah. she'll hold on, and just every year, I wish I had just done that. It's festive. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. Yes, yeah, so absolutely. So in case you didn't hear her, she was saying another example. She wanted another example of things that people don't forgive themselves for and how it becomes their identity. And it's a, a, she used the example of a, a woman who has an abortion who didn't feel like they, they didn't feel good about it. And every year they ponder and they re, relive this and they re-guilt themselves, Cheryl. It, it's re-guilting themselves. Like I'm, I'm renewing my guilt for having had the abortion and having put myself in that position in the first place. So there's a lot of reasons that, and things that we don't forgive ourselves for. But those things, again, are things that we are doing to keep ourselves down. It's not everybody else doing that. And I just found it for me, um, it was hard. It was hard to say, you know what? You, you shouldn't have just quote unquote known already. How were you gonna know already? What was the experience? What class did you take? that you failed or that you passed and now you're not using, what? You know, I didn't have anything. I didn't have the good examples in my household of how I should be treated in this relationship. I didn't have it. You know, I had almost, a, I was a blank slate because my mom didn't have a bunch of men in and out the house and all that kind of stuff. So I didn't see it until I got to be a teenager. And then she had a quote unquote open relationship so when this guy was talking that it sounded good to me, you know, I, but I didn't know all of the pain. I didn't remember the times I could hear her and her girlfriends talking and how, how much pain she was in about the, the way that he conducted this relationship. I, I forgot all about that. I just thought I could handle it. Not that, you know, some people say, oh, well, you thought you could change him. No, I didn't think that. I thought I could handle it. But it was something you don't know. It's something you don't know. You cannot try to change. You know, change something with something you don't know. Well, and, and you're right. And I'm, I, I wouldn't even think to change it because I didn't think it was anything wrong with it. Like you said, well, don't change the motor in the car. I don't know how to change the motor in the car. Mm. I don't because I don't know nothing about it. Okay. Exactly. If you don't know, you don't know. Otis, was there something that you wanted to say, sweetie? Yeah, uh, you know, you're talking about forgiveness and, and accepting all the blame that you caused and the harm that you've done and uh, taking responsibility for all your actions. I did all that when I was in prison and I had to accept all the mistakes that I made because I was a really bad alcoholic and I, and I didn't take responsibility of being a husband and a father and then taking care of my family and everybody else. And it was wrong, I mean, and I had to take that into consideration and accept the fault and, and all the trouble I caused before I could forgive myself. And then uh, I, after I did all that, I, I got out of prison and uh, I started saying, "Well, I'm already healed. I'm not going to. I'm not going to do any of that more anymore. I uh, left all that behind me, and uh, I don't drink, smoke, or do drugs. God has taken all that." evil stuff away from me and uh, he's given me a better and, and a happier life. Now I, all I do is I uh, I have a good home, good apartment, good car, good job and everything else is working out and I'm as happy as can be. That's awesome. Let me ask you this. When it came time to forgive yourself for all of the, the harm that you felt that you caused, did that take some time? Yes, it took a long time because um, I had to accept the, the consequences while I was in prison for and accept the mistakes that I made. And then when I got out, I straightened my life out and accepted all that and, took, and uh, made a decision to make goals for myself 
I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to take this course. I'm going to take that course. And I'm going to get, and get all right with myself. And then I'm going to go and uh, enjoy my life. That's awesome. I love that. Get right with myself because, baby, that's where it starts. Right there is where it starts. And and part of that process is to forgive. Forgive myself for the things that I didn't know, the things that I did, things that I did that I knew wasn't right. Them too. I had yeah. to forgive myself for quite a few things, you know, and that became part of me releasing the pain that I was in. It was so important for me to release the pain. I couldn't um, get out of the pain. And I think at some point I didn't even realize that I was holding a grudge against myself. I didn't even know I was, but I was. I was holding a grudge. I had resentment for why didn't you know? Why did you stay? Why, why, why? And ultimately, um, it was because of my own insecurities and things and not knowing. But guess what? Now I know better. When you know better, you do better. You know, and that's just it. So now we got, now we got, now we got, hey, we got Terrell in the house with us. Hey. You're supposed to do better when you know better. But sometimes people are too worse they know more. That's the truth. That's the <laughs> truth for sure. So um, I want, Patrick, I want you to chime in for me. Talk to me. I always like when you talk to us. Wait, one more time. Try it again, Patrick. Try to unmute again. There you go. You're unmuted. It's interesting that you said take responsibility for not knowing. Because we're in these groups, and now that we're participating more in society, you can acknowledge your shame things but other people going through the same thing so by networking and sharing with people sometimes they share with you and you go you know I understand yeah. help you or you have to help people. thank you so it is it, it does help to have a support system around you and when people one of the reasons that I I've said this many times one of the reasons that I uh, record these and post them is because there's somebody that feels like they're the only one going through whatever we're talking about. It's a huge relief to know that I'm not the only one that feels this way. Or I'm not the only one that's been through this. Or I'm not the only one. Let's say we feel like we fell for the okie doke on something. I'm not the only one that made this mistake. I'm not the only one. And so that becomes very important. It is, uh, and maybe it's the misery loves company thing. I don't know, but I know for me, understanding that I'm not the only one that doesn't get this this way. I'm not the only one that feels this way about this particular situation has helped me a lot. It has helped me a lot. So that's a, um, that is definitely a big thing to know that we're not the only ones. And it is helpful to have other people who have lived similar experiences. And the thing that, if you think about it, that's interesting with us is this. We're not all from the same background. We're not all from the same town. We're not all, we don't all have the exact same experience, but we have all come in contact with one thing and that's the criminal justice system and incarceration. And that put us in a club that is something that we're more, we have more in common than we don't. And that is a good thing because we get to understand, even though we may not have come to the situation of incarceration the same way, the result, the harm, the, for example, the fact that we have come to the conclusion that the number one fear of people who have been incarcerated and the people that love people who are incarcerated is going back, going back to prison. So that, you know, that's the one thing we all share in common. We don't want y'all to go back. Y'all don't want to go back. But these are things, no matter how we came to, we all have that same kind of fear and that same concern. And it is a common ground and it's a support system that we can use one with another to help us get past the things that um, nobody may not talk about. Nobody may not, you know, um, family members may not know 
that there was shame or fear or you haven't forgiven yourself for whatever it was that took you away from them for all of those years. Yes, sir. Um, I want to just do advocate devil clear. Some people come out from prison and they don't get it right. They comfortable with going back to prison because that's what they know. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The people that love them might not want them to go back. But their rationale and their ability to uh, adjust to society, it just don't be there. And they be like, shit, I'm going to go back to where I know. I, I know somebody that did that. I know somebody. Home, they'll go back to prison in a heartbeat because it's, it's too hard out here. Or my people is tripping out here. I am feel safer in jail. You know what I mean? So it's a lot of people that this just getting out of prison and doing just being out here is too much for some people. And well, they don't have the right support system around them neither. Or they just they just some people come out of prison and they be shell shocked. Mm -hmm. So when they come to society, it's like, whoa, this is too much. I'm gonna go back to what I know. And they're going to tell me what to do. A lot of people that have come home and ran right back to that jail because being free and responsibility was too much for their ass. So they ran their ass back to jail so they could be codependent because the prison made them enablers to the fullest. And that's what they know. And they're not trying to come out here and work for anything. And the, it's just that the vast majority, there are definitely a segment of people like that. But the vast majority of people, particularly one of the things I found the difference in those kind of people, Terrell, is they did short stints. They did short stints. People who did long stretches, nah. That Once you hit that 10 and more, people did them long stints like that. They're not trying to go back. It's the, it's the ones that pop in for two here, three here, you know, when they was doing that. that Because I know a guy who literally said oh it's too hard out here but he had been in and out you know he may do short term whatever come home go back be out for six seven eight months whatever go back and then one time he was like it's too hard out here for me to work and i'm going back and literally the next week went and robbed a, a liquor store and went back to, to prison but guess what he got a lot more time that time and when he came out that time he ain't never been back but that's what i think because he did a very long stretch at that point like I say, people who've done long stints, they don't they don't have that mentality. Um, um, the ones I'm talking about, them people were gone for a while and they couldn't adjust. They was like, mm. man, this is too hard. I'm like, man, no, man, you gotta you gotta give them some time. Shit. You get all that time in prison. You've been in prison more of your of your life than you've been on the street. Mm -hmm. So when you come back to the society and things is not working in your favor, you might not be getting the support you need. And things is not working in favor. I mean, the people I'm talking about are people that did stresses. Mm. I, I don't know very. So I don't, I don't think I've so met very many of them. I, I, so in fact, I don't think I met any like that. But that's okay. That's not to say yeah, that they don't right. exist. Uh, but let me see, <laughs> Doyle. I see you shaking your head. I just want to want you to unmute. Wait, wait. Unmute for me. Unmute for me, sweetie. Go ahead. You said you want to hold it a little bit longer? Okay. Okay, no problem. Absolutely. Um, so, uh, also, um, Di, any comments from you? I don't really know about, I mean, I do know a lot of people that have been to prison that some of them do come home and they get themselves in trouble to go back because they're institutionalized. Mm -hmm. Being out here is just, it's like being on a foreign country. They don't know nothing about this side. And I know some people that did a very long time and came home was very happy to be home and work their ass off and stay home. Mm -hmm. But it's just how you program your own self. Mm -hmm. If you don't feel like you have nothing in there, you were something, you have something in there, you want to go back to that. Because I mean, you don't have nothing. That's the only way I look at it. Because I do know people that have done a very long time and stayed out and did good. And I know people that did a very long time and went right back because I hear was they didn't have nothing. They had no family. Their friends was all gone. Everything, everything they do is gone. So in there is where they built their life. So mm. that's where they enjoy being. Is in there. And what about um, on forgiving yourself? Oh, forgiving yourself. Forgiving yourself. First of all, you gotta know what, exactly what it, what are you forgive yourself for. You gotta start off with what are you gonna forgive yourself for? Are you forgive yourself for being a teenager? Are you forgive yourself for just 
not knowing what you didn't know and the things that you did and you don't even know why you did it, but you did it. <laughs> or you, you forgive yourself to get along to get along. Or you mm -hmm. just forgive yourself because you just didn't know. All the things take a lot of time to break down for yourself. For me, I'm a real kind soul until you get on my bad side. You will see it because I'm not going to hide it. But I had to forgive myself for the things I didn't know. But I didn't know is what I had to forgive myself for. Now, the things I've done when I knew I should have did, I had to forgive myself for those things too because mm -hmm. they wasn't right. But as you get older, you get wiser. And like you see, you're around a community of people that can really help you break it down exactly what you forgive yourself for and understand exactly what that feeling is. It's a lot better. But if you don't have nobody to talk to you, are you afraid to speak out? Because I was very um, private with my life. I didn't speak as much. I spoke in my whole entire life to other people. But now no, I'm not, a, you know, I'm not afraid to speak. But I'm just very private with my life. But I had to forgive myself for a lot of things. And now, I mean, you know, do I feel um, guilty or feel ashamed about some things? Yeah, like damn, we should, we should, should do that. But it's the truth. Tell yourself the truth. Mm. Don't tell yourself no lie. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, I'm human. If you pinch me, I'm gonna say ouch. If you hit me, I'm gonna hit you back. So it's just telling yourself the truth. Yeah, that's important. Now that that is uh that element right there, telling yourself the truth. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's sometimes sometimes that's that's that first step, and that's hard to do, right? Because you don't want to tell yourself the truth. Because guess what? You've been living like this, moving like this, acting like this. Being around and people like that, everything seemed cool. But that, but that was my thing. That was why the first, the most painful thing was acknowledging that it was because I participated mm -hmm. in that, which was why I was in so much pain. That was so hard for me. But guess what? That was that was the truth. Die. It point was point the truth. It wasn't. It, it wasn't. I couldn't blame him for hurting me because I, I participated. I was, I'm still married on the book. But for 30 some years, I was with this one person. In my eyes, I was really doing right. But in reality, I was doing wrong. Mm -hmm. I was wrong as shit. Because mm -hmm. I knew he was wrong. Mm -hmm. So if I'm doing he wrong and I'm still right here, I'm wrong too. That was, I had to get it, get down in my spirit. When I got that in my spirit, everything was a wrap after that. Bye, baby. See you later. And it's cool. I'm not mad at him. I'm not even mad at myself. I told myself the truth. I don't care what nobody else thinks. Right. Just that I know how I feel, and I told Diane the truth. I don't care what nobody else thinks about it, feel about it, whatever. That has nothing to do with me. Trust me. I'm going to go home and go to bed. Soon I eat, I'm going to sleep. So I don't give a shit. But what I'm saying is I told me the truth. Yeah. That's it. That's all it And there's something about, about that. It's something about that. Um that process of acknowledging that hurtful truth. Because it hurts. That because it I know it really hurt me. It hurts. I, I, I know it hurt me. Oh my gosh. It was it, no they beat me with a sledgehammer that day. That was that was really, really bad. You know oh. and I did it's like, oh, you participated? I did. He in other words, he couldn't get that close. He couldn't hurt you that bad if you didn't let him get that close. So now in here. He took advantage of what you offered him. How are you gonna be mad about that, I Noreen? That what why you can't be mad at him. The only person you can be mad at is you. Oh my gosh, that was horrible. It was bad. It was terrible. But that was the first step was being honest with me about what actually happened and not sugarcoating it, not trying to Gaslight myself, but in reality, you do until you get to that point. Yeah, where you really want to be honest with yourself because when you talk to somebody about it, you explain it, but you're really not explaining it. Mm -hmm. No, you're not. Very you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you explain it, but you're really not explaining it. Right. When you talk about it, you just talk about it, but you're really not talking about it. So it's the point when you get stand up on your on your feet and say, "Look, this ain't right. I I know I can do better." I know I can do better. You keep telling you, I know I can do better. And I know it can be a better way. Mm -hmm. So when you tell yourself just those things, that word right there, I know I can do better. And I know it's a better way. Things will turn around for you because now you're being honest with yourself and your feelings. I'm not worried about his feelings, her feelings. They, I don't care about that. I care about my feelings first. 
And when I started caring about my feelings, that's when everything changed. And then also, as long as we're not being honest, what I believe is I would be subject to make the same mistake again. Yes. Because you what you ended up really where it was comfortable at where you was covered at. Well what it did what 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 I realized is um I had to acknowledge what I had done so I knew what not to do again. Write it down. I tell everybody I write it down. <laughs> but the only way I could get there was to acknowledge my part and say, okay, well, what did you do? How did it get like this? How did I go from that this was good to this is the worst thing, the depths of hell over here? How did I get there? What happened in between here? I started writing it down. Mm, that That's a good, uh, like journaling and, and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Start writing it down. Every time you get a feeling, you get a thought, if, if they went real, real cool, you write that down too. Like mm. today was cool because why, what made it better? What made today happy? What made everything grow? You start writing it down, you start putting it together so you can tell yourself. Mm -hmm. I don't need nobody else to tell me. I need to tell myself. Right. When I start putting it together on that paper and I'm reading it back to me, and you date it. Mm -hmm. Make sure you date it. So I got my time, did it, whatever, but I always date them. And it was like, oh, okay, okay. They look better on Tuesday. I did exactly what I wanted to do, not mm -hmm. what somebody else mm -hmm. wanted me to do. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you got to understand, when you write it down, you got to know exactly. What happened that day? Mm -hmm. Just that day, not yesterday. That day, mm -hmm. when you got up in the morning, okay, you did. You went to work, you came home, and you probably just laid down. But you was happy with that. You felt comfortable with that. You was enjoying yourself, right? All of that day. Because then it becomes it becomes a tool you can use in the future, right? The same way you learn what not to do, in as much as you want to be happy, you can learn what to do. Right. What did work to make you feel happy? Yeah, it's just know. tools. It's just tools that That's we can your, use. Put in your bag. In your bag. You know, and things that you can use along the way. Um, uh, let me see. Once I could see what I had done and recognize why I had done those things, I was able to forgive myself. It was difficult to admit that the reason I allowed my partner to get away with so many small disrespects was twofold. The first reason was that unconsciously, I did not believe that kind of man would stay with me because my father never made me feel that his love was permanent. He did not live with me and I always felt that access to his love was not guaranteed. The second reason I allowed my partner to inflict so much pain was that I didn't have an example of what I could or should require from any partner. There were instincts that told me that the things I was being subjected to were not right, certainly not healthy, but I had no frame of reference to know what it should look like. It would be many years later before I consciously understood that I attracted the emotionally unavailable man whose emotional development had been stunted somewhere in his life and further required compassion and understanding in his inability to freely share their, their emotions. It took years to understand that I had been taught that the plight of the man was my burden to bear. Well, I've learned to forgive myself for being uninformed. I wasn't misinformed. I was simply uninformed. I had nothing, um, as the saying goes.